Alyssa and her doctor, vascular surgeon, Dr. David Gruner, are both joining us in the audience. Alyssa, first with you, about a week. Yes. Since that procedure, yes. how have you been? I feel awesome. Um, honestly, I can't remember ever feeling this good. Uh, I drive all day, and before, by the end of the day, I'd be in a lot of pain. My back would be killing me. And now, six hours in the car is like, no big deal. I'm ready to go. Um, my bloating has subsided significantly. I feel a lot lighter. I just feel better overall. Dr. Bruner, the three of us really have not heard of pelvic congestion syndrome, so we're, we're learning something uh, today as well. When was this first discovered? This procedure was actually, has actually been done for a while, but the pelvic congestion is extremely underdiagnosed, I believe. It's very, very common. Something like 50% of women of childbearing age have it. And I mean, pelvic cramps in women of that age are pretty much ubiquitous, but most women just deal with it. Um, in Alyssa's case, basically, she had tried a bunch of other options in the past. Um, we did an ultrasound that showed that the blood was pooling in the pelvis, but it doesn't give us a very, very clear idea of exactly where it is. So I thought the next rational thing to do for Alyssa was to proceed with what's called a diagnostic venogram, which is essentially similar to an MRI or a CT scan just done in real time. Um, on the venogram, we saw the blood pooling in the pelvis. That's exactly where her symptoms were. So I thought the next step was to proceed with the procedure. Alyssa, how do you feel overall? Like, how quick was your recovery? I know you feel well a week later. Honestly, Dr. Gruner said I would be fine in a day, and I walked out of there, and I could have gone to work that day. It was absolutely painless. The next day, it was like as if it had never even happened, but I just felt so much better. And Dr. Gruner, I, I want to ask you, because obviously a multitude of potential causes of pelvic pain in women at what point, in your estimation, should a woman consider this as a potential treatment? Is it when everything else has been ruled out? I'm just curious. There are a multitude of potential pelvic pain causes in women, but this is an extremely common cause, and the problem is the symptoms are very diverse. As we all know, there's a lot of stuff in the pelvis, but, and this is not a very specific disease. It doesn't come uh, with a very specific subset of, di of symptoms. Basically, anything in the pelvis um, can have pressure on it from the blood backing up from the veins, and it can range anywhere from the sciatic nerve causing back pain is in her. It can, it can pool in the ovaries, which causes painful intercourse. It can sit on the bladder, which causes pressure and urinary symptoms, basically anything. So in a young woman that doesn't have a very clear-cut history of anything else, like fibroids, et cetera, I think an ultrasound is a very easy, very non-invasive way to kind of get a screen for this. If the ultrasound shows something, a diagnostic venogram is also a very low risk test that gives you know, a very clear cut picture. Is an ultrasound or a venogram for something like this usually covered by insurance? Yes, absolutely it is. And then the procedure as well? Correct. What kind of resources would be out there for someone looking for a surgeon similar to yourself who does this procedure? There are not a lot of people specializing in this um, and typically one of the barriers to treatment is the people that treat this are typically in a hospital setting. Um, so really, it's, it, it really has to be more astute on, on the terms of the gynecologist, et cetera, but gynecologists don't usually do vascular ultrasounds, so there's a little bit of a paradigm there. Um, one of the key things, I think, that's, that's crucial to diagnosis is, is all venous disease and all venous pooling is basically orthostatic, or meaning it's related to your position. So when you're standing all day, or when you're sitting all day, or um, after you've been standing towards the end of the day, that's when symptoms will be really bad for this disease. And that's when your chance of diagnosing appropriately is gonna go way higher. Great point. Well, we really appreciate both of you being here today. Alyssa, so happy you're feeling better. Yeah. And we'll have more information on our website.